Hello and welcome to the Knit Girls. This is episode 446. I'm Laura, also known as Lola. And I'm Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Less. Today is July 2nd, 2019. Yes. Happy 4th of July weekend to people in the States. And I think it was Canada Day this past uh, Monday. Yes. And then they also get the 4th of July off, but it's called something else, like Family Day, I think. Mm-hmm. I was talking to Ashley about it. Um, well, if you celebrate any of those holidays, have a great holiday week. Yeah. We are kind of like doing it live because... <laughs> Flying by the seat of our pants. Which is how we normally do it, but usually we have show notes, and um, Leslie's internet network connection's down, Mm. and so we can record, but we can't access anything on the internet, and we use um, Google Drive to do our show notes, secrets out, Yeah. Um, (laughs) and have for a long time, because then we can just copy it, we can share that document amongst the two of us earlier in the day i can fill in what i need to because i hate leslie's keyboard she hates my macbook (laughs) she can fill in what she wants to and um then we can just pull it up and then she can cut and paste everything including my typos and awesome spelling (laughs) onto the internet on the show notes show notes which are always on uh the knit girls with three l's.com can always find our show notes there don't know if you knew this but you can actually search our show notes too so if you're like oh um Laura was knitting something out of um, loop, yin yang. What was that? You can type in loop and everything that we've ever made out of loop comes up. How do you know that? Because we do that too. (laughs) So a lot of times um, when we are looking to see what we made something out of, we'll search that pattern name or if it's hand spun or if we pick up a project a year, a year and a half. a year, Like, Leslie just did that when she start, resumed her hand-spun blanket mm-hmm. um, to see what pattern she needed to pull up on the internet. So, there's some secrets for you in the great podcasting land. It just makes it easier for us. But, today it does not. So, we're probably going to forget some... I know I'm probably going to forget some stuff, but we will try to do we the best we can. We will endeavor to not disappoint you. <laughs> um... I have one knitting thing to talk about and one spinning thing, and that is all. So, um, I have a few more than that. So why don't you go first? Okay, I will totally go first. I am still working on my Rose City rollers. Look, I'm starting the yellow right now as we speak. I got three whole rows on these knit at the dentist, and I kind of wish I had insisted that I had my knitting in my chair with me because um, I had to get a crown today. It's my first crown ever. I broke a tooth. I know, Leslie's like sad violins playing. Seriously, um, I think I got my first crown in my teens. <laughs> so, A, oh my gosh, crowns are expensive. <laughs> <laughs> so I won't be, I was looking at new shoes for SSK. That budget is gone. <laughs> um, although there are some super cute Keens on Zappos that look like, that are made out of wool right now. Just FYI. Oh God, why would you want wool shoes? Well, these are, these were more for or not SSK, but for the winter. Mm-hmm. They're the, you know, the Keens that I wear that are Mary Jane's that look super cute with my hand knit socks. Yeah. Um, they have ones that are made out of wool that are super cute, and they come in red and black and some other colors, and they're more, uh, like, tweedy looking. They're super yeah. cute. I'm anyway. not knocking wool shoes. I'm just knocking wool shoes in Mississippi. Well, I would buy all birds in a second because I've heard they're amazing, but they don't go up to my size. What is all birds? All birds are those wool, like, tennis shoes. They also have other shoes. They're supposed to be amazing oh. um, and super comfortable, but the largest size they do is a 10. And I'm a 10 and a half, oh. so I'm excluded, which is fine. Less shoes in my life are always better. <laughs> Laura oh. does own a number of shoes. I like shoes. <laughs> um, I'm wearing wool shoes right now. Are you? Yeah, uh, I'm wearing wool toms. Mm-hmm. Oh. Whatever. All right, back to what I'm actually doing. <laughs> uh, I was in the dentist chair for almost three hours, and I wish I had, had, had knitting because I was an emergency like fit in, so they were coming and going quite a bit, and there was a lot of downtime. But instead, I got three whole rows knit on. This is a toe up, kind of my own version of Rose City Rollers. I'm using Wendy Johnson's to a pattern essentially and just binding off an inch after I do the 
you know. So that's really the only nod to it being a Rose City roller. Yeah. I mean, it rolls down. It was inspired by... She does have a toe-up version of the pattern, um, but I know that I like this heel. So, and that you can find for free on Wendy Johnson's website, but she also has some great books that use this heel as well, and some other patterns um, that are free or paid for that use this heel. It's the same heel that I use in um, Socks on a Plane. It's basically so, the heel she uses for almost any sock that's toe-up. I've Unless tried, she's specifically following the pattern. Yeah, I've tried other to, I've tried other heels, and I do like this, and I like an afterthought heel just to make um, my stripes match up and stay the same. But this is pretty close because this black I, when I did this heel, I made sure to hit the black stripe over the heel, so um, I didn't lose any stripes on this one. That's pretty short. Anyway, this is the first one. Knit picks. I'm trying to remember the Felici. name. Yeah, it's Felici, but what's the name Dark of the... Dark Side. Dark Side is the... And they just put up some new colorways as well, which are cute, but I resisted right now because we have SSK and, you know, when they came out in a month and I want to buy self-striping from Lollipop and... Well, no. Um, Vesper and a bunch of other self-striping people who will be there. So... I resisted the nitpicks Felici lore, the sirens call. I'm knitting these on size zero needles. I've totally worn, I don't know if you guys can see that, but I've worn the finish off on my Addy sock rockets completely and totally. Which is funny because I haven't been, I feel like I haven't been knitting socks this year. I've been averaging maybe one a month, maybe less, of Rose City rollers. <laughs> but. You know, my next pair of socks is going to be a gift for someone else. And then after that, I have some hand spun that I did, um, which will be shorty socks too. But I did an opposing ply hand spun a couple months ago, probably close to a year ago. So I really want to use that. So zeros, magic loop, that's it. Same old, same old on these. I'm going to work on these today though, um, while I'm sitting here so that I can get a little bit done on them. Um, the next thing that I've been working a ton on is my loop yin yang in the kiss colorway, um, v-neck boxy, which is a pattern by Hohi Locatelli. It's screaming pink. It is. I like it. It uses a marl deer. Let me guess. Are you change. alternating? No. Hold it up. I feel like there's a pretty clear line here. That's funny because that's all the same. Like right here, sorry. Mm hmm That's all the same. Look Skin. at the thing. Can you tell? Maybe it's just a tension difference. Because you went from flat to the round. Mm -hmm. That may be the difference. Probably. Okay. I'm not alternating the skeins. That's unusual for you. Yeah, it is. But everything looks very much the same. So I didn't and I, f it was like all the same lot because mm -hmm. I got her first lot so I didn't feel like I needed to um, you will see as you knit this yarn that sometimes the grayish the alternating color is yeah, more prominent it comes out more prominent and I've had I did have to cut the yarn once and I see it in this one here too where the ply is a little thicker and yeah it has come thick you guys can see it there but that's the cool thing about yarn that's custom milled. And these are 400 yard skeins, and I've only had that happen in one of the other ones. And I probably won't even get to that point. We'll see. Um, so I don't mind it so much when it's smaller batch stuff um, and not commercial yarn. I don't know. And it's that's just a twist thing. So when the machine... When they were milling the yarn, the machine just didn't get enough twist in that one ply. So this is, the way this yarn's made is, um, the pink fiber is dyed, and the gray fiber is dyed, and then it's two plies of the pink and one ply of the gray, and as they <coughs> mill the yarn, that's what creates that marled effect. <coughs> she also has a worsted. Excuse me. 
um, this yarn was given to us to review. I want to make sure that that is very clear because I know I like to know as a viewer when stuff is given to a podcaster. So, but it's really been nice to work with. I've been enjoying it a lot to the point where I'm like, I could totally knit this sweater again in a different colorway. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, yeah, I got around, I'm at nine inches below the underarm. I have around 10 more inches to go. Do you guys want to hear my analytics on this? You're going to hear it anyways. <laughs> Every row is taking me 13 minutes to knit. It's just plain knit. That's with watching TV. If I'm reading as I do it, it takes around 15 minutes. Um, cause I have to click on my Kindle. Um, 10 rounds equal one inch. So I have 10 inches to go on the body and that would be a hundred rounds times around 13 to 15 minutes around. That's how much time I have left. So I was doing this. the math in my head and then I got distracted. Yeah. So I was a uh, last week after we recorded, I think I had 60 more hours to go on the whole sweater. So I think I'm down to around 50 maybe now, maybe a little bit less. Do you need to move your progress thing? No, I moved it yesterday actually. Okay. Um, so this is where I was yesterday. This is the knitting that I got done today. I was from last week, I was three inches in. So I got six inches done this week. So almost an inch a day, which is kind of the goal at this point. If I want it done for SSK, we'll see. We will see. It might not happen. It just depends on how crazy life is. And that's living in a fat squirrel sweater bag. If you're attending SSK, Amy Beth is putting the pre-orders for the SSK, um, different sized bags up on the 5th, I believe of July. SSK is our annual knitting retreat in Nashville, Tennessee. It happens the third weekend of July. And then the last thing that I've been working on this week is just a few rows in. It is the DK Enchants by, I think that's how you say it. Entrechat. Okay. E-N-T-R-E-C-H-A-T. Um, by Lisa, I think it's Chimerly. I'm just a few rows in. Um, and I had forgotten I pulled out these needles. And these are the ones Humberto ate the tip oh, of. Yeah. So I had a little Humberto cry. But anyway, I'm using Lola Bean. I thought I threw the tag in there, but I didn't. In her Pinto Bean base, this is her DK base. I got it at Stitches South because she was there, which was super awesome. I also got a skein of her worsted while I was in the booth. Um, and I had wished that I had picked up more, but I was trying to leave stuff for other people <laughs> as well. Um, this is her Queen Bean colorway. I love it. I think it goes for kids with pretty much every color scheme that any nursery could be. And it's very vibrant. I feel like it's got every girl's favorite color, no matter what that color is. Pink or purple or, boys, or green. Yeah. It works for anyone. So I think it's really vibrant and very awesome. Um, so that is happening. I almost cast it on Milo with it, but I went with this instead because um, in finished objects, I finished these wee little teeny tiny mitts. It's totally not your turn for finished objects. Oh, I, I thought you, you said you ahead. had no finished objects. I don't, but I haven't shown my knitting. Oh, you haven't shown knitting. But you can go ahead. You no, go. Out. Oh, I'm sorry. People Taking think over. that I boss Laura around. It's really not that <laughs> way. Um, I totally forgot that you had me go first. Man, I've been talking a long time. You go with your knitting. So your one thing. My one thing. I'm knitting on a pattern that basically everybody has seen. Um, not because I've been knitting on it forever, but because everybody has knit it. I feel like everybody has knit it. It was very um, prevalent this year in the Christy Glass video. She does that Rhymbeck. Show Me Your Rhymbeck mm -hmm. sweater, which is super cool. It's one that I want to knit. So it's called The Weekender. It's um, a rag, or not a raglan, sorry. It's just sort of a simple, easy, comfortable sweater. It's got it's very boxy um, shape. 10 inches of positive ease built into it. Uh, suggested um, into it. Very simple shape. Um, 
Again, it is bo a boxy looking sweater. Um, I'm using uh, Cloudborn Pima DK cotton in this navy color that I got from Blueprint. Um, it was not provided to us. We purchased it uh, for a Laura Nelkin top that mm -hmm. I just ended up pulling out. One of out. her Nova sweaters. Mm -hmm. And it's living in this Whimsy Stitches bag that I got at Stitches United. Mm -hmm. and Did I call it Stitches South earlier? No, you just I'm said Stitches. Okay. And so this is one of his um, bags that support LGBTQ plus causes. Um, and, you know, so that's pretty pretty easy to see with the rainbow flag. But he does all his own hand embroidery on the sheep. And I picked the one that looked angry because it made me laugh. The sheep looks very cross. <laughs> but uh, that's Whimsy Stitches. Oh, that's upside down, Rick. isn't it? Yep, he'll be at oh, SSK. That's what my bag is, too. This is Whimsy Stitches. Yeah. I got this at SSK last year. I and to say that. I really like this sort of heavy duty feel. Well, it's not heavy duty feeling. It feels nice. It's this, like an upholstery fabric. Yeah, it's like a tweedy feeling fabric with this pop of color. I really like that. He's got yeah. a good eye for that stuff. Uh, so, anyhow, last week, I believe I had just cast on the ribbing for each side, and I was about to join the two I think so. in the round. I believe that's where I was. And so now I'm about, what would you say, like eight inches, maybe more if I'm measuring on the back, but in the front. Ten inches, definitely. Um, quite a bit. Past that point. Uh, this is a DK weight yarn. I'm knitting it on size nines. Um, which is 5.5 millimeters. Laura laughs because she was knitting the little baby mitts on... What? Well, the, um... I was knitting those on threes and fives with the sweater, the little baby sweater that I just cast on. Um, with threes, the Lola right? Bean no, I'm using fours. on fives. Oh. But the mitts I did on threes and fives. Yeah. So this has just been knitting in the round and the round over and over and over and over. Um... I can't do it for extended periods of time just because it's cotton and it does eventually start hurting my right hand just because it doesn't have that sort of give, that elasticity. And, um... You with your fancy words. <laughs> uh... Yeah, that's basically it. Like, <laughs> I've worked a few rows on the sock I had cast on, but that's it. That's literally all. Yeah, you did that during our VKM yeah, for a bit. That's all the knitting that I've done this week. With you know, with the the month leading up to SSK, there's always a lot of prep work to there do. There is. Um and it's a lot of little things that just time wise add up. Um that we don't mind doing, but we yeah. have to fit it into the stuff we're already you know, we already have a lot on our plates, so it's just making the time, so um yeah, that's it. I have no finished objects, but Lori does. I have two, because they're teeny tiny. So, the teeny tiny mitts. <laughs> I knit out of Queen, um, Queen bean, bean, which is that Lola Bean yarn. These are little baby mitts to yep. keep them from scratching their faces. It's um, Or just to keep their hands warm. Um, this is the three to six month size, and I knit these in around two hours. Maybe, well, more like three, I would say, because I knit one during the VKN, but the other one was already, like, here yeah. at the start of the VKN. So around three hours worth of work. So good last-minute baby knit projects. This is going in my baby knit bin. Um, I think they're going to go to my friend who's having a baby girl at the beginning of September, hopefully, um, as long as she makes it that long. And um, the one whose little girl wants me to knit for her American girl, oh, though. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, Catherine is the new baby's name. And um, I'm going to gift these with the little sweater. Um, I'm knitting sweater in the six-month size. So six months will be, like, February for both mm -hmm. of these where they can get used. These can get used a little bit earlier, but... That way she has something for true winter, because a lot of the other stuff I knit her was um, more summer stuff, or that I pulled out of the bin for her, I should say. 
And then this is going to stay in the bin until next last minute baby that I have. And Pearl jumped on it earlier. So it's got pearl hair that I have to pick out. So this has pearl hair all over it. <laughs> yeah. This is um, a wee little berry baby hat, I think was the name of the pattern. I went deep stash diving and I found... Um, at one point in time, I was working for a yarn shop in Hernando, and she went out of business, and she owed me, um... Fees for teaching classes. Yeah, and working, um, that I had not been paid, so she gave it to me in yarn, which is better than nothing, um, and she carried Cashmere, so somehow I ended up with around 10 skeins of... This is a cashmere. It's similar to like Debbie Bliss Cashmerino Erin Wheat. Mm. Um, it was Cascade's version of that. So it's deep stash because that store went out of business in like Whew. 2008. Yeah. Um, Laura and I met there and then yeah. like the next year they closed. They were open for less than a year. So um, maybe if we're stretching it a year and a couple of months. Um, that's a whole nother story. So... Um, yeah, I have all these little, I have a lot of this yarn, and I got a lot of Schaefer yarns from that. Um, so I'm down to my last five skeins of this yarn, and I was like, I need to start moving this out of my house. Like, This is a really good use for it, though, if they're colors that work for... Yeah, so I have this red, and I have a smidge left of this, um, probably around 10 yards, maybe 20, maybe 15 yards of that left, which will be perfect for, um, I'll do like a scrappy hat out of all the colors at the end. I have a ton of this green left, like, cause it was one whole skein and yeah. that only used like 15 yards. Do you have any orange? Or do you um, have a pumpkin hat? I don't have orange. I have dark purple. I have a light blue. Blueberry? Well, yeah. Well, blueberries don't have leaves on them. It'll be okay for blueberry though. It'll be fun. Um... We're not going to be super scientific with this. We're just moving. I demand that my baby hats be scientifically accurate. I have a light green, which probably won't work for this, but I can use it for just a baby hat. Um, I'm trying to think what other, another, maybe a pink. I have a bunch. So I'm going to go through and start using, and I have some Debbie Bliss Cashmere Air into, I think, somewhere. Um, but I think that's black. <laughs> but I'm gonna start using this up to kind of move it out of the stash. This is so. Um, each month I've been tracking like what's entering my house stash wise and what's leaving my house, and one whole skein <laughs> left my house this month. And it's not that I haven't been knitting, it's that, um, like what I'm knitting on is bigger projects. So when the sweater is done, that'll be five skeins that leave. So that'll be a good thing. And when the other sweater is done, that'll be like seven skeins that leave. It's just you know what can not leave leaving. with you today? A bucket of door prizes. Ooh. I'll take it to your car for you. Yeah, we can put it in one of those bags if you want. But yeah, I can throw those door prizes in the room that Amy Florence is supposed to be staying in. Awesome. <laughs> hey, she likes to take pictures. You should enlist her help. <laughs> that would be amazing. We could totally make that work. Make it a PJ and camera party. Mm, yeah, well, it would just move faster. That'll be exciting. Because um, I take photographs of all the door prizes before SSK and I put them on the SSK... Um, Blog. Blog. Anyway, this was knit on size six needles. Oh, I want to talk about these needles, though, because I brought them with me. Or are these the new? Yeah. So. <laughs> I signed up to buy a set of these without really understanding what they were. <laughs> um, we were just going to get one chair, one set to split. And then Leslie was like, no, I want my own because I'm going to use it for, um, sweater sleeves and I said fine. I, I have no recollection of that conversation. I believe it happened. I just don't remember it. And so I contacted, we bought these through House of Yarn because we love Meg. Yeah. Um, and that store in general. And so when they came, um, 
mostly was like, I don't want these sales. <laughs> well, I just, I didn't think that I had my own set. That was the thing. I went to hand them back, and she's like, no, those, those are yours. <laughs> okay. So this is the Ch- Chaggy Twist Shorty set. They come in sizes. It's similar to their mini set, except that comes in sizes four through eight. So perfect for baby hats, sweater sleeves, and they are short lace interchangeables. Basically, what they're going to create are um, cords that go from, I think it's nine inches. Hold on, let me read. Uh, 13 centimeters. Whatever that means. Um, five, six, and eight inches plus the tips. So the smallest would be nine. So the largest would be six plus eight is 14. Um, and you can do other things in the m- meantime. So what I did for the hat is um, it comes with two sets of tips. Hold on. Just pull these out. Like short and super short. Two and three inch, I believe. Yep. It comes in this bag. With all the little accessories. I'm going to have to like buy cords extra cords. The... Yeah, look at the little size. <laughs> Teeny tiny. Um, and I bought these primarily to knit baby hats with, but also to knit um, sweater sleeves. Sleeves on sweaters. This so will be helpful for. These are the cords. There's one that I have, the longest one. Longest, medium one. I think it's longest one I have my needles on now. Um, so it's three teeny tiny cords. And then <laughs> these are the needle tips. And they're super short, the two inch. Short and shorter. Or down here. Those are the two inch. And then there's three inch up here. And so because I don't mind gripping on two inch, but I find them awkward to, like, I don't mind gripping on my non dominant hand that's not throwing the yarn. Um, with the two inch, but I like to have a little bit longer of a grip on my right hand, which is my throwing hand. Um, so what I did for this project, and this is how I'm probably going to use it all the time, is I made a kind of a 13 inch. <laughs> Uh, because needle. Laura's difficult and she can't follow rules. But you can do whatever you want with these, which is why it's cool to have interchangeable. So one side has the super short size six, and the other side has the almost as short, but not quite as short <laughs> size six. You can also change if you're struggling to get um, stitches over a needle tip. You could go like smaller on this side and larger on this side. You can do whatever you want because no one is the boss of your knitting but you. Um, sometimes you're not even the boss of your neck. So many times. So this creates like a 13 inch, which is about perfect for baby hats. Um, a little beyond newborn size, like a three to six month size. So, and it would be perfect for a sleeve for me on a sweater Mm -hmm. around. That's around my bicep measurement is that. So, Yeah. And if I wanted to make these 12 inch, I would just switch this tip out for the shorter tip and that would make a 12 inch. And then if I wanted to go smaller, I could switch out the cord. So that is what this was knit on. It was a good knitting experience. I didn't have any drama. I untwist every single twist set of needles that there can be as I knit. It doesn't matter if I tighten them till mm. whatever, they always untwist with me. It's every set of needle ever. Um, whether it's signatures, Chaigu, Haya Haya. I wonder if you... Knit, Knitter's Pride, Knit Picks, Lika. I wonder if you knit Continental, would you still... I wonder if it has something to do with the motion of your hand. My throwing? Yeah. I know. Chris, um, Chris of Chris and Denise of Lost City Knits is doing this really cool thing where he's photographing people's hands mm-hmm. as they craft. Um, and he, he told me I had way... Uh, Way lots of motion. Yeah, a very <laughs> active hands. I am not, um, it's funny because people think I'm a fast knitter. I'm not a fast knitter. I just spend a lot of time knitting. I'm a pretty slow knitter. I don't feel like so. that's accurate. I, I don't know that you're slow. I think you're, a, you know, you have your own method and yeah. you chug along. 
Yeah. I spent a lot of time knitting. So, cute baby hat. You'll see lots more of those because that yarn is leaving the stash. And um, that'll... <laughs> do what? Come hell or high water. Yeah. Um, well, it'll just be nice to have... I need to restock that box. Like, my goal for June was to... Well, pre-SSK, really, was to finish two baby knits, which I did, to kind of restock that box a little bit. And um, I'd like to finish my two sweaters before SSK. I don't know that that's going to happen, but we'll see. So that is it for me for finished objects. But you have some spinning. I do. Um, so we mentioned a few weeks back that Laura and I sort of went through some of my fiber and pulled aside like four pounds worth of fiber to try for me to try to work through um, this year. Ideally this summer, but realistically this year. Um, and this was an eight ounce braid, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so one of the oldest items in my stash. Probably also from 2008-ish. Yeah, it was, yeah. Um, the first year that I was spinning. Um, and I don't even know if this lady is still no, dyeing or not. not. So this is creatively dyed yarn, although this is fiber. And this was a really popular blend of hers, um, which was 70% wool, 30% sea cell. It doesn't even yeah. tell me what kind of wool or if it's superwash. No idea. And people don't make that blend any Like, you don't see that blend commercially available, but I've seen lately. So this was the Key West color. I'd be curious if you know someone that stocks that blend. I think it's a great blend because it's almost got like a silk to it that yeah. kind of like fades it out. It's almost like when you put white in fiber and it kind of fades it out. Yeah, like a, a milk, bit. like a milk protein will sort of, um, uh, is fade the right color? Will sort of disperse the color a little bit. It'll blend yeah. it to make it a little lighter. It's like it's got like an ice sheen to it. Yeah. So this is um, the fiber. It's okay. I mean, it's been marinating a long ten time years. in the stash. Yeah, at least ten years. And fiber does not marinate well. Um, and it's been tightly braided that whole time. So, um, I finished the first four ounces. I just split it in half. I was going to do three, but then I decided I was. I'm just going to do two. I'll make my life a little easier. Yeah. So I'm that would be pretty in that Stephen West shawl, the one that um, dotted race. Yes. Yeah, I don't think I'll get anywhere near that yardage, but um, I have been spinning this on the Starling, the Daedalus Starling, um, which I still heart. Still, They're still working on the soft stop um, pedal. Oh. They do have a pedal, and they have had a pedal, but it's not the soft and stop start like the Hanson. Will, it'll slow itself down. I think down. that actually has to come from, I don't think that's a pedal issue. I think that's a motor issue well, I, they said they're still working on it okay. so are you gonna get the pedal in the i probably on? will um, yeah i think that's a good call because even though it'll i'll deal with a little bit of backspin it'll still be easier to turn it on and off um and as long as you're not going super fast you don't get a ton of backspin so and i don't typically have the motor running really quickly mm -hmm. just to the to the way that i personally spin it's usually not going super crazy fast laura spins much faster than I do um I the speed wise much thinner than you yes, do too, so is, I need more twist that is accurate so um kind of like the their items are 3d printed as well so you can kind of see the color progression a little bit um, from the center out this fiber has pinks and oranges and grays and purples and some sort of taupey mauve-ish colors uh you know, again, it's been sitting for 10 years, so it could be smoother than it is. But, you know, it is what it is at this point. I just want to spin it and, and finish it. It'll be pretty. Yeah. Um, so I'll create it as a two-ply, and maybe it'll be done next week. This is um, this is like two and a half ounces. The other ounce and a half is on the wheel downstairs. I started oh, cool. it. I just didn't finish it. That's good, though. Eight ounces is a lot to spin, dude. It is. But, oh, and there's even greens. I didn't see greens in the other braid, but hmm, just a smidge. It's a lot of color. Yeah, she did speckles before speckles were kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for me. What about you? I am trying to get to the end of this row. 
I finished spinning two sets of Knit Spin Farm Bats. Um, so it's around seven ounces, six to seven ounces for each. Um, one I started last year, last July, during um, Tour de Fleece. And so I spun the other half of that, and the other one is a fresh spin. So sh let me show you both of those. Um, so these were both spun on my shock reefs, long draw style, and then plied on the Hanson Mini Spinner. Whoa. This is Rain Required. It is Angelina, Cordale, Falkland, Finn, Marino, Paul Worth, and Targi. I was trying to get it to Rainbow, but if I really wanted to do that, I needed to wind both my colors back and start. and start from the other side so they're a little bit off one definitely had a lot more the one that i spun last summer had a lot more singles on it than um okay this one i can't see how pretty it is so i have to so it goes through the roji biv red orange yellow green and then a violet indigo um spectrum with a background of gray and it's 462 yards, so enough to do a shawl. And it was two, three ounce, so that one's six ounces. And then this one this spun a little thicker. This is um, a purple with green pops and a lighter purple silk that runs throughout it. It is Cordale, 53% Cordale, 27% uh, Merino, 20% Polworth, Silk, and Silk Noil. She doesn't put her ounce measurements on her um, Fiber Club bats, which this was December 2018. So yes, moving out that stash that, because uh, I am in her bat club, I split it with Leslie, but Leslie took my peacock colored bat, mm -hmm. so I took this one in revenge. Yeah, if one of us bats. really loves a color, <laughs> then we can get two of that same bat. Yeah, and then we just yeah. switch. Um, I really like this month's batlings, too, but I'm going to ply mine with gray, but that's a whole other story. I feel like this would be an excellent SSK prize. Or it could be something that I know. Because I'm self centered. It, sometimes gritty. it's really hard to let go of things that you love like that. It's beautiful. Um, and I'm spinning three other things for SSK, so I don't feel the need to. Yeah, it's beautiful. You Thank did you. A good job on that. Thank you. Um, also, I'm not happy with the, because one single sat for a yeah. year, um, the twist is super uneven, so I wouldn't feel comfortable having someone else. No. Justification. I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> like, okay. So, when Fiber sits on a Shit bobbin. about the science, y'all. <laughs> when Fiber sits, a single sits on a bobbin, um, it has an amount of twist that was originally added to it. Well, that twist goes dormant over time. And if you have one for a long time, what you're supposed to do is wind all that off and throw it in some water and that'll Re reawaken that twist. No one got time for that. So when I applied, one single had lots of still, I mean, they probably had the same amount of twist, but one was still super energized and the other one was not, so it makes for, even after this bath, it makes for some um, very uneven ply aspects to it. So I wouldn't feel comfortable letting someone else use that. Anyway, um, and this is like cold dead hands, because <laughs> this is me. So, but I spun that other, the chill sweetening mm -hmm. is going to SSK. I'm spinning one of the goodie bag fibers actually started yesterday. That is going to SSK. And I have some Hello Yarn that I'm currently spinning that is also going to SSK. Oh, I got her drill um, press today. Oh, I should be getting my um, club shipment any day. So that's exciting. Um, yeah, so there will be hand spun for SSK for sure. For door prizes, but not these. Anyway, um, I like how you're trying to give away my stuff that I'm making. <laughs> you spend more than me. 
I always give away some hand splintered SSK, and I will this year because I just enjoy the process more than actually making. Oh, I love knitting with hand spun. Um, Not that you can spun. tell right now, but you knit with a fair amount of hand spun, especially for baby stuff. Um, yeah, like hats and stuff. Yeah, you I had a baby Milo out of hand spun, didn't you? I've knit like four baby Milos out of hand spun. I knit Sadie a little like snug bug out of hand spun Aww. last year. He was wearing it a couple weeks ago. It was super cute. Um, yeah, I knit a lot of baby hats and stuff out of hand spun. Anyway, because hats people typically don't wash wash, so I feel comfortable. And I have some super wash Cordial that also is going on the wheel very soon from Into the World that um, is going to be baby. Uh, future baby knits. But yeah. Um... I'm reading a book, but I can't tell you the name without looking it up. That's how into it I am. I think it's Mark of the Raven. But let me look it up. Why don't you talk about what you're reading So first? I'm reading the last in this K.F. Breen um, paranormal romance uh, male-female series. Um, it's This one's called Dual Mage. Natural Dual Mage, I think. It starts with, like, Born in Fire or Raised in Fire or something like that. Um it's okay. It's it, I, I like the characters. They're funny, but at this point, it's the sixth book, and I'm like, let's wrap it up, people. Um, it's the final book in the series. And I started um, an audiobook called Top Secret, uh, and it's written by uh, Serena Bowen and L. Kennedy, I think. It's oh, a, yeah. It's contemporary male-male romance. It's not on Kindle Unlimited. You had to buy it. Uh, it was an audiobook. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Because um, a lot of the L. Kennedys are on um, yeah. Kindle Unlimited, but that one was not. So yours is Mark of the Raven? It is. It's about to get abandoned. So this is Mark of the Raven by Morgan L. Boosie. Um, this is, if you've never used Overdrive before, I highly recommend it. A lot of libraries use it, so I borrowed this from the library. Although when I went to link it today, I think it's two dollars. Um, it's on sale right now. It's the first in the Ravenwood saga series. So um, is this YA? No, it's not. If it was YA, I feel like it would be better. <laughs> so it's straddling that line between. It probably should have been written as YA because the main character is Lady Celine and she's young and she's the heir to this great house of Ravenwood and she comes into her powers in the first chapter and her sister doesn't like it that she came into her powers because she was born first and she's the heir so there's some sister conflict there and she has the ability to um, enter people's dreams and she can enter people's dreams and assassinate them essentially and that's what her house does is they go to that person's worst greatest fear or worst moment and use that in their dreams to destroy them so so they're a well-loved house then well no one knows that they can do this it's been kind of like hidden over time and it's very like all the females have the power and they um, convince their husbands or don't tell their husbands, but also, like, interfere with their dreaming where they can't speak about them having this power. So why are you abandoning it? Because it's not moving fast enough. I think I'm 30% through the book, and um, we just entered someone's dreams for the first time. I don't know. It's just not moving fast enough for me. Um, none of the characters are likable or mm -hmm. rememberable so far. Yeah. Like, I can't tell you. Selena's her name, and I know that because it's on here. Like, super not memorable. Her mom's not very nice. And it says, apparently, that she's going to assassinate a man who can destroy her family, but he's also the only one that can bring about peace to the nation, so she has to choose between justice and honor or legacy and power. There's conflict. Yeah, but pretty lame conflict. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like it's not super original. It's been done before. And I must have heard about it somewhere because 
I don't know. I had this one that came in, and the second one on hold already. Oh. So I must have heard about it. Like, someone must have recommended it to me, but... Hopefully that someone's not watching the podcast going, oh, crap. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, we all read different things. It, re- it was originally released in November 2018. Mm-hmm. Um... I also think that it can depend on what else is going on in your life when you read a book, whether or not you yeah. like it or not, you know? It falls into the genres of fantasy, fiction, historical fiction. It's done by Baker Publishing Group, who I've never heard of before. That's interesting. I have never pay attention to publishing. Oh, like... Except Dream Spinner Press. I know that one, because they do a lot of the mail-mail romance. They do mail-mail. <laughs> They're known for mail. That's the only thing they take is mail-mail, Dream Spinner Press. Every, um publisher kind of has their thing that they look for yeah um so it's interesting to me penguin that's yeah penguin's r- random a, house random house is another publishing company yeah we're not just gonna sit here and list publishing companies that'd be boring <laughs> i feel like this is a game that i could win <laughs> you would absolutely <laughs> i feel like i could totally win this uh on the kids book front like candlewick press is one of my favorites and I, I tend to find like things that i really like that are published through candlewick but anyway um it's just not re- it's just not doing it for me although the cover is super cool it's just not it for me so um i'm gonna abandon this i'm gonna take the other one off hold right now while i'm thinking about it because i don't need it using up some of my 15 holds some of your father's 15 holds <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell people that this is not my library card. Who oh, no. Someone at the, the library that your dad has a card at that nobody knows <laughs> where that is. Whatever. It's going to tattle on you. Um, other things that I have on hold, so let me take this off, um, or things that I have coming up. Remove. Remove hold. Um, things that I want to listen to really quickly before they expire. I have um, The Gentleman's. I actually left this over here for you to read like two years ago and you still haven't read it. The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue. The second one came out, so I'm re listening to the first one. Here, give me that and I'll take it downstairs with me. Um, I'm re listening. That's a YA. I'm re listening to the first one on audio. It expires in two days and five hours, so I really got to get on that. Um, so the second one's out, his sister's story. So I want to re-listen to that or reread it before um, the new one comes out. Furyborn by Claire Legrand is a YA fantasy that's supposed to be really good. That's Wheezy's. And then Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan was supposed to be good. I have that to read. So things that I have on hold that I've been waiting on for forever. Okay, we're not going to go through your whole admin here. <laughs> That's okay. You'll see them as they come by. I had a lot of reading to talk about for a while. So, anyway. Um, I love using the library. I try to use it whenever I can. Whether it's my library or my father's library. He's not borrowing anything anyways because he's in Alaska. This is true. And they their cell signal is so... Like, they go a week plus without it. Well, with Overdrive, um, you have to be connected to Wi-Fi. Oh, Wi-Fi, not cell. Yeah. Okay. So you can't even use, like, to get books from over to your Amazon account from Overdrive, you have to have Wi-Fi. You can't just have cell. Okay. At least that's how it used to be. I don't know. So, other things to talk about? Um, we need to do a Patreon. Before yeah. we leave for um, SSK, and I thought about trying to do it Saturday so we can con... A fail along. A fail along. Amy Florence into failing with us. Well, we would need to come up with that? an idea. So... Because the crafter's box won't be here until later in the month. That's fine. Um, they have those, like, little plastic bead things that... Do you know what I'm talking about? That you melt and they make into shapes? You, you melt them? Yeah. They're these little... Like pony beads? They're not pony beads. They're meant to be melted. Pony beads are... Okay. So you melt beads and do what with them? Well, they make shapes. And you can... There's a Harry Potter one. Oh, dear. <laughs> what are those things called? We I get keep to getting... the root of why she's suggesting this. <laughs> Hold on. Let me see if I can find them on Joanne. Someone is screaming it at the screen right now. <laughs> what that's called? Yeah. It's like a kid's craft. 
Is it like a paint by numbers with beads or something? Yeah, kind of. I mean... Really, you're just going to search Harry Potter? Yeah. It's these things. It's the deluxe bead box. See, and you melt them into... Oh, these are perler beads. Oh, is that what they're called? I didn't think you melted them. I thought they were just placed in the thing. So you have to, like, iron them? I don't know. To get them to I've stay? I've never done it. I've just seen him. I feel like this would be an amazing thing to do, and then we can make Harry Potter ones. <laughs> Whatever, dude. You can make Voldemort. <laughs> <laughs> to match my black, black soul. And then, um, yeah, I think that'd be fun. We'll have to find a craft. So Amy Florence, <laughs> um, of Stranded, is in the country. Yeah, you have to iron them. For the month. You don't even have an iron at your house. I do have an iron at my house. <laughs> um. I don't have an ironing board, but I have an iron. Yeah, Amy Florence is here for the month of July. <laughs> and she's visiting us for less yeah. than a week. She's coming oh, for a little while before SSK and a little it's while It's not after. available at South Haven. Oh, we'll have to find something else or order it. Um, yes. <laughs> so she'll be here this weekend. Hopefully we'll be able to record with her. Um, I'm on call the whole time she's here, which kind of sucks. But it is what it is. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to get rope her into recording and then the weekend before ssk sarah will be here tina it's and my sister um if we oh, do monday night we can have both of them that'd be fun <laughs> um sarah well sarah's been on the podcast before mm -hmm. yeah and beck you and beck recorded before a long time like mm. in the first dozen episodes yeah um you and beck recorded um so it could be fun i mean it would be kind of a hilarious you know trash fire but it'll be <laughs> fun at the same time Excuse so me. uh i think that's it really um, yeah like ssk said, is in two weeks we will take the week of ssk off like the week that we get back from recording more than likely um just because we're gonna need some self-care time after that and we get nothing knit or spun or crafted at ssk, at SSK. Okay. so it's not like we would have anything to show you guys yeah, besides our gluttonous purchases in the market. Which is fine, yeah. but... We try not to be obviously gluttonous. <laughs> so but we want to support our vendors as yes, well. Yes, that's true. Um, I think that's it. I think that's all we got. So we will see you again next weekend. Hopefully we'll have Amy with us. Yeah. Um, but if not, I, hopefully we're awesome enough that you'll tune in anyway. Yeah, and we'll try to get a Patreon information out to you guys quickly yeah as soon as possible so you can plan hopefully to attend if, if it works for you guys so have a great weekend week and weekend we'll see you again next week bye y'all bye y'all